Welcome to the Making the Brand Show with Damien and Tamisha Duncan. Each week, power couple Damien and Tamisha are taking you behind the scenes to share their stories on creating a successful brand while tackling your biggest business struggles. Their mission to help you build the business and life of your dreams today. Welcome to another episode of Making the Brand. And this episode I'm especially excited about because this is something that comes up for every single entrepreneur that's trying to build their business. If you are trying to build your business, if you're building a business, you might already be seasoned in your business, but the whole idea of us being in business is to make money doing what we love. And the biggest question that comes up all the time is how to actually sell yourself in business, how to find prospects, and then how to convert them into sales. So this show is definitely needed and you definitely need to stick around and listen to the entire thing because we have one of the most amazing sales mastery and revenue coaches here with us today. Her name is LaDawn Townsend. And LaDawn and us, us, we, I, you, all of us, have had, um, I'm trying to figure, is it like LaDawn and us? What's the proper way to say that? Um. Hello? LaDawn and us. Okay, then it's LaDawn and us. <laughs> so we um, started our relationship um, actually working together. We worked with LaDawn. LaDawn actually coached with us in helping her to create her escape plan from her corporate nine to five job. LaDawn will tell you a lot about what it is that she does, but LaDawn is really great at taking um, action, taking directive, and then running with it, right? So we were so amazed at the results that LaDawn got after working with us, putting the strategies into place. LaDawn was like, knocking it out the park with sales and getting mm -hmm. clients to the point where we were like, okay, what are you doing? Because these are results that we have not seen in a long time. And so because of LaDawn's success in her brand, we knew that she was somebody that we wanted to bring on specifically for two reasons. One is because LaDawn is just like the rest of us, you know, trying to figure it out in this world of entrepreneurship. She has real strategies, real world situations that she's sharing with you. I don't want to bring somebody onto the show that's just, you know, giving you all this hoopla and, and smoke about what you need to do. And they're not actually physically doing Doing it in their business. So I wanted somebody that can come and really share authentic results for you and break it down and simplify it in a way that's understandable and to make you feel empowered. Like as soon as you listen to this podcast, you can go and execute that. So that's why LaDawn is here. And of course, because she has the proof behind the pudding. LaDawn is, will share her results with you in a few minutes. But when I tell you she's doing phenomenal things in her business, she's doing phenomenal things in her business. Like I'm so proud and blown away at the results that she's making in her business. At such a quick, rapid and rate. And a quick turn, yes, yes a quick, yes. rapid rate. And I know that's the results that you guys want to get. And it's, re and it's reminiscent of her hard work, dedication, and determination, and perseverance to get her where she was, you know. And, you know, we just wanted to bring LaDawn on to also show the, you know, the authenticity, the imperfection, mm -hmm. the good, the bad, and the ugly of being an entrepreneur and getting sales and, and after making a transition as the, the one that she made. So I'm going to stop running my mouth, LaDawn. I'm going to turn it over to you so that you can share with the audience a little bit about what you do, who you do it for, and some of the results that you've been able to achieve for yourself and as well as your clients. Amen. Well, I'm excited. I had to say amen on that because that just felt like such a great introduction and I'm honored to come on your show. Um, I've actually... I've shared with Tamisha, but I actually followed her on social media, I think going back to even like 2013 or 14. And I was so impressed with her brand and, and what she was doing. And I just, I, I didn't even know what I was supposed to do in business at that time. And, and I can share that, but I stayed connected because I knew one day, somehow I figured something out and we work together. So working with the Duncans has been one of the best things in my business, in my life. It, ca it was a catalyst for me. So I'm LaDawn Townsend. I'm the proud CEO and chief revenue growth strategist at The Boss Group, which stands for Vision Optimization and Strategy. So we are a full service end-to-end -end revenue growth strategy firm, and we focus on one thing 
finding the leakage that's eating away at our clients' profits, time, and productivity. We work with small to medium-sized businesses that are typically at 1 million to 10 million in revenue, but we also work with scale-up businesses to where you're out of the startup scale, you're really wanting to get consistent in your business with your scales, hit your first 100,000, we work with them, and, and we support large enterprises. And it's funny, because as I describe my, the clients we work with, they're all over the map, which was nothing like I thought it was going to be. So I guess you can say, if you're a business leader that is serious about increasing the revenue in your business, because you know you need to grow, you want to bring more clients, you want great customer experience, you want seamless operations, then we work with you. Or maybe you want to do all of that because you want to sell your business. We work with you as well. It's really more of the business leader that we look at than the industry. Um, but I'm so excited to come and talk about this topic of sales today because I was afraid of sales forever. Um, and so when even some of my clients have asked me recently to teach them how I sold them because they're a hard sell. Okay. I knew I had to talk a little bit more about this, <laughs> about this um, topic. So I'm really excited to come here today and share that. Awesome. And so I'm glad that you said that because I, as I mentioned earlier, I think that, you know, with us, entrepreneurs stepping into the space of entrepreneurship, I always say, you know, you may be really good at baking a cake, but that doesn't mean you know how to run a bakery, right? I can, I can bake a cake, but that doesn't mean I know how to bring the people to actually eat it. And, and that's what a lot of us struggle with. We're really great at something. And now it's like, okay, now I have to market this too. Now I have to talk to people. Now I have to get people interested in me. It's overwhelming. And people just have this overwhelming fear when they hear the word sales. They get sweaty. Ready, they feel like uh, they, they don't want to do it because it makes them feel pushy or, you know, all those feelings that come up, we've all experienced them. Even as seasoned entrepreneurs, when it's time to, you know, quote unquote, make that sale, people get anxious about it. Mm -hmm. So the purpose of this show today is really to, to ease that anxiousness, to help people to figure out a way based on your tips and strategies on how to really go into first finding your prospects because that's an issue for people. People don't know where to start as, as far as mm -hmm. finding prospects in their industry. And then how do you actually convert them into sales without feeling salesy, without feeling, you know, pushy or overwhelming when you're speaking to prospects. So LaDawn, first share with us um, how you were able to overcome some of the struggles that you had, you know, to sell yourself. Yeah, great. So um, I'll share that sales was my biggest stumbling block because I was really thinking more of uh, from a selfish perspective versus than serving other people. Um, you know, I come from corporate America for over 20 years and I was an executive in corporate America and I went through a layoff and went through the next few years after that of building my business on the side and trying to figure out how to run, you know, being in a full-time job. And so I've done the work. And what I realized is the, the reason that I wanted this business to be successful had to be bigger than my fear of sales. So I had followed a lot of sales training and enrolled in things and learned different things here and there, but there was a shift that happened for me um, a few months ago, and I think it's when I reached out to you, and I just was done with my life not being the way I wanted it to be. Um, and that was really the catalyst for me. I don't encourage everyone to get there because at that point I was just ready to do whatever. I was ready to leave my job. I, I was just done. And so there were two things that happened. I made the decision that my goals and dreams were bigger than my fear. And then I had to learn how to sell. And so I also enrolled into a sales program at the time that was very high accountability um, we went through sales drills every day. So there's a blend. There's making the decision and then there's finding the right resource for you to learn the skills. No one just is born being a salesperson, a saleswoman, a salesman. You have to learn the skill. The same thing when you drive a car. You just don't naturally know how to do all of that. You have to learn the skill. So when I put myself in an arena that I was uncomfortable in and I had to show up and I was very visible, I was asking people for uh, feedback. And I think for women, we also have to get out of our comfort zone and allow ourselves to you know, work with men and learn from them because there's something that you can learn from the masculine energy to balance the feminine. And I know 
know we don't have time to get into all that today, but I was really committed about making money in my business. And I had to get around people that were hungry for that and weren't just talking about the emotion and feeling of selling. I need to know the skills and I needed to have people to push me. So that was the biggest thing. And I was so uncomfortable. I remember, you know, doing a, a podcast interview similar like this. And one of my peers, like at the end, you know, drilled me on role playing and overcoming objections live in front of people. But then what happened from that is I also had people who saw that I was putting myself out there and they would reach out. And some of them held me accountable. A lot of them were men that held me accountable, really um, supporting me in my business and were, and were calling me out with it. Like, why aren't you at this level? What is happening over here? And what it really boiled down to was really ego. And it was ego and it was wanting to hide behind perfection um, and hide behind, you know, if you're an executive so long and you get really good reviews and you just think you're, you're really good at that. And even though that's not my personality, I was hiding behind the ego. So I had to say, I'm not going to sound polished. I'm not going to look polished, but I was willing to look quote unquote, I guess some people would say foolish, right? And that's ego itself mm -hmm. um, in order to really learn what I had to. So I showed up and I asked people to, to drill with me and, and go over questions. And then I took it out into the market to actually talk to customers after I had practiced, after I had went through, because you're always learning, but I then had to come out of the learning and into the practice. So then I knew what else I can work on. And there's still many things I need to work on today, but at least I got over that first hump of the fear of it. And now I just go through and do it. Well, usually too, you know, when, you know, most people that make the transition from being an employee to becoming the employer, you know, if you've been doing something all, you know, for, for X amount of years, you know, when you're working for a, a corporation, what happens is, you, you, you come from a place where you don't have to worry about closing the sale. Right. You know, there's somebody that's already, or there's a team of people who are already doing that. So, you know, you don't, that's something that doesn't show up on your radar. All you have to do is provide that job function or whatever it is you're doing. And a lot of times when you make that transition to becoming an employer, it's not really that you're, you know, people are afraid, but they don't really realize it's just that they don't have the skill, like you said. Yeah. And, you know, they have to get out there and understand that when you become an employer, you know, sales is the lifeline of your business. Mm -hmm. And if you're not selling, that means you're running a, a, very, ex, a very expensive hobby. So, exactly. You know, and and we're, we're not in the business of running hobbies. No. In the brand. Yeah. And I come from the banking world and it's funny because there's so many regulations that have been locked down in banking that it's, it's sort of like you're stuck. Like, what do you do? And sales is a dirty word and sales is a dirty word in many different industries. But here's what I've come to know. We're all selling each other something. Mm -hmm. You're either selling yourself on why you should have this business be successful for you and your family or you as an individual, or you're selling yourself on why you shouldn't and you're believing one or the other. And so I really had, and I remember growing up, my, pa my parents were entrepreneurs. So we would do cold calling and door knocking on summers and weekends, because that's just what we did. We'd go to networking events when we were teenagers and have to talk to people or sell customers that came into the business. So I was doing it before it became sort of a trend to do. And I, I shifted I got outside of my computer and laptop and actually connect with people. And I know we'll talk about that more, but I just really got back to the basics and was like, okay, look, I'm making this way too complicated and confusing. What's the worst thing that happened? If I call someone, they hang up, which I've been hung up on many times. So what do they do? I call back. Like they're not going to remember me from anyone else. So I just had to get over how it looked and realize that there was a bigger purpose and a reason for me doing what I'm doing. Absolutely. And, you know, when, when you're talking about most people are afraid of, they're not really afraid of the selling at, at a portion of it. They're more focused on the outcome of being a no or yeah. being rejected. Yeah. And one of the things that we always, you know, say, you know, say to our clients and even the listeners on, on the podcast today, you know, we like to use rejection as redirection to go get a yes. Exactly. Or what we say when someone says, tells you no, we look at a no as a new opportunity to go get a yes. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line is, again, it's the lifeline of your business. If you're not, if you, if you want to get to the point where you're telling the opposition no, you're telling people no, because you got so much business coming in where you have the opportunity now to, to push business off that you normally wouldn't 
you know, wouldn't have to deal with. Yeah, there, and I've actually let a few prospects go. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so that's to be able to fire and say no. To, to exactly, fire. you have to. And so, when you're in a, a state where, you know, you're not generating enough cash in your business, you find that you're saying yes to everything, even mm-hmm. though in your gut you know it's a no, but you're like, I'm, I'm desperate. I need this money, so you take it. And so, you know we want people to get comfortable in their skin saying no. We want people to get comfortable asking for what it is that they want, because it's all about the ask. If you never put yourself out there, then you'll never know what you can get. And if somebody Mm -hmm. tells you no, then you just move on to the next person. That's the nice way of doing things. And you know, that sounds great. And it's like, yeah, I'm going to do it. But when you actually sit down to pen and paper or to phone or whatever, with whatever uh, platform you're using to reach out to people, reality sets in, right? Our nerves start to get the best of us. We're like, oh God, what do I say? What do I do? What if we think yeah. about all of these things? So that's the reality. That's the part that I really want to focus on. Mm-hmm. Next is, you know, how do you come up with, or, or what is your strategy for actually starting the conversation? So where, how do you go about finding your prospects for your business? Let's start. Yeah, great. So, um, so when I'm preparing for my prospects, I think there's, there's a few different ways that you can look at that. Like everybody knows about online marketing. Um, people have systems that give them funnels and they're into Facebook ads and they're all to that. I want to take a few steps back first um, to really help the audience identify where to find their prospects. And in order to do that, there's two different lanes. So if, if I, I'm very visual, so if people want to grab a pen and paper, I can sort of walk them through this. And, and this is a blueprint that I teach my clients as well. So on a piece of paper, you want to write a line down the middle. And on the left-hand side, you want to write the word prepare at the top. And on the right-hand side, you want to write the word execute. It really boils down to two things. The preparation before you execute and actually reach out to your your prospect audience, whether it's cold or warm, preparation is really key. And there's two things that you have to do to prepare. And of course, there's, there's growth that you go through with them, but it's basic. It's what are your services? What is your price? Before you reach out to anyone, you've got to know what those two main things are because it will help you leverage the sales conversation. There won't be guessing. And even getting into how your, what your price is, there's a whole formula behind that. So I work with a lot of people that they'll say, I remember years ago, my mentor told me, you know, people want to do a Fiji yoga retreat for a week and only charge, let's say $500, but it's actually three grand per person. So you've got to know what is your price and make sure you're not in the negative. And what are your services? clearly understand your services to where people ask you, you can describe it in and out. At the beginning of the call, my pitch was really clear on what I do and who I serve because I continuously practice it all the time. So when I get in front of people, I don't switch it. If I'm at a networking party, I was at a dinner the other day, someone asked, it's all the same thing. So get clear on that. That's your preparation. Then you move into your execute. You want to then look at in the executing of your pitch. That's really what the sale is. It's it's introducing people to what you do. I was so stressed about sales that one of my accountability partners, she was like, LaDawn, you got to find what works for you. So for me, and and I was teaching this in a webinar the other day, I mean, for me, I'll light a candle because I, you know, my office space is my own and and I make it that way. Um, I'll have some music going in the background. And then I also have a mantra that I say, if I, I don't always have time to do this, but I have a mantra that I'll say to myself, it's pre-recorded. It's about two, three minutes long. And I'm putting myself in the mindset to get me out of the way so that way I can go serve people. So that's my environment. But then I don't always have that. Sometimes I'm stepping outside of a conference to call someone or I'm in traffic and I'm calling someone. But for the most time, I have scheduled time where I'm actually working and calling people on sales or reaching out to people. Uh Oh, I'm so excited. I'm pulling my earring out. Um, (laughs) But that's a piece of what I do. So let's talk about the execute. You want to take a look at now that you know your services and you know your price, you have shifted from someone who is just selling a thing to an expert in what you do. That is so key because that also is going to shift how you see yourself when you're talking to people. I took a look at who do I know and what communities am I a part of that I can add value. We've all heard of this before, but I want you to approach it as giving value as the expert and not value as just another person bringing noise to the marketplace. 
Facebook is there. Facebook is there. These groups can be a number of different places. There could be networking groups. They could be people you go in person with. They can be Facebook groups. For me, I invested into programs that I knew had quality people that I could learn from. And what happened is when I showed up and just started giving value and content because people were pouring into me, I was pouring into them, I started to get clients. That wasn't even my number one goal. I wanted to really get perfect at, at talking as an expert, sharing my content. And when you lead as an expert and you show your expertise, it shows to people. Mm -hmm. So here's a really good tip. Let's say that you currently are a CPA or a doctor, or you've worked in corporate for 15 years. You have receipts behind your name of some type of job that you've done, but you want to be an abundance coach. I'm just going to use that as an example. That's amazing. You got to get clear on what value am I going to show up and give them as an abundance coach, right? And you have to ask yourself your why, because when you're going into these groups, if you're going into groups that are high caliber people, professionals, they are your target market. There are people you can just tell that it's a different type of group. There's not a lot of spamming and sell me this and sign up for that. And I have this program, none of that. The, you can tell the difference. When you step into that, ask yourself this question first. What's my why for my business? Because I think so many people are putting their skills on the back burner when you could actually use that to start your business. Because if your why is to leave your job, but you're really focused on only being an abundance coach, but you've got mad skills that you can use, then what is really the why? Why not use the fastest path to cash, which is your skills, to do something around what you wanna do in the future. Because let me tell you, too many people are following your passion. Your passion isn't always gonna get you paid. Your passion isn't always gonna make you stand out. There are a lot of us, especially if you're over 30 or over 35, we have skills that we can bring to the table. I played around with entrepreneurship for years because I didn't bring my skills to the table. I was trying to do so many other things that were really being a part of the clique instead of being a part of the clique that's getting paid. Mm -hmm. And so before you even reach out, I want you to get clear on your why. If you're like, nope, LaDon, I'm going to be an abundant coach and I've been a CPA, a lawyer, an attorney, a doctor for years. Forget about that. Okay, great. Make sure you position yourself as the expert. When you're going into the groups, give value, real value. And I always connect with people. This is the tip number two of how to execute is when people may compliment your post or they may reach out or like some of your Facebook ads or your Instagram or whatever it is, I reach out to people. I ask them, hey, thanks for connecting with me. What, what intrigued you about what I posted or about what I shared? And then that, this is where we go into the number one tip under execute is you got to offer your service. Mm -hmm. say to them, you know, Damien, thanks so much for the feedback. You know, are you available to connect offline? Because I want to hear more about what you do and share with you about what I do. Be very clear. Don't be spammy. I get messages all the time. Are you interested or open to a income opportunity? No, you don't even really get a response from me nowadays. Yeah. It's just really, it's, it's a decline in block mm -hmm. because it shows me that you're not leading as an expert, A, to find out what I do, B, to find out what I need and approach me that way. So find something customized. Now, is it going to take longer? Yes. But like I have different scripts that I use, but I, I change it up depending on who I'm reaching out to. Get them offline into a conversation, whether it's going to be a Facebook live that you do or a private messenger that you do with them, or they hop on Zoom or it's a phone call. You want their phone number and their email because here's the deal. And I posted this a while ago. If Facebook goes away tomorrow or mm -hmm. Instagram or any of these social media platforms, your telephone is not going to go away. Mm -hmm. Your ability to email someone is not going to go away. So get off line and have a dialogue. A lot of the times we want to hide behind some of the automated marketing because it, it depends on the value, but there's some of us that haven't equipped ourselves with how to have a dialogue and get into that conversation and be okay with the sweaty palms and getting hung up on and sounding stupid. So we hide behind all of this. And in the end, the sweating palms, and there's no such thing as being stupid. The only thing that's stupid is if you don't learn how to go through and sell. That's really the biggest thing. And I hate to use that phrase because it's really harsh. Um, but, but that's the deal. So get an offline conversation going. That is number one. So when you're preparing and executing, 
That is how you find your prospects because it's going to grow a muscle in you as well. You know, I have people that send me referrals. The majority of my business right now is referrals to, to be under six months in business and to have that come in is amazing. We did a 20 K in our first few months of business. We're on track to do multiple six figures. We're hitting 400 grand this year. You know, those things, that momentum is because I showed up as an expert. I tracked down each and every lead. I'm not too good for it. You know, it doesn't matter who they are. I'll have a dialogue with them and I don't judge them. And I offer my services up front. Mm -hmm. And then when you get into the consultation, there's a way that you can offer it as well to where I'm not here to talk about the weather. I'm not here to talk about your vacation. I'm here because I know as the expert, you need what I have and it would be unethical for me to sit on my butt and not offer you my service and then be wondering why my business isn't successful. Absolutely. Sure. And the bottom line is when you're not, when, when you make it about yourself, you're doing a disservice to yourself and also the client because you know you have a value added proposition that can help them catapult and grow oh, their revenue, right? Yeah. And, and actually yeah. change their life, which in in turn will change your life. And you know, you were definitely in my head because one of the things I was thinking about was out, out of all of everything you said, to kind of summarize it is a closed mouth doesn't get fed. And for it some doesn't. apparent reason over the years, technology has created this, inter, this uh, the interpersonal skills, people have lost those soft skills to get on the phone and be belly to belly with clients because they're just saying, okay, I'm just going to put it out in the ad. I'm just going to put it out in, in, in cyberspace and hope that it sticks somewhere. See that just, yeah. that's just not going to, it, it doesn't work. I mean, you may get yeah. one or two clients if, if you're lucky, but you know, you have to really get in the, get in the trenches, find what's authentically working for you because you know, you have so many, you know, self-proclaimed gurus out here who, you know, are teaching sales and what worked for them, but what worked for them might not necessarily work for you. Now, you know, right. the, te the technical skills is definitely important, but you have to be able to create something that's authentic to you that makes yeah. you feel, you know, empowered when you're going out there trying to close that sale. Exactly. And the biggest piece of prospecting too is you got to get creative. I literally sit at my desk. I have a list of people that I cold call. For me, I don't really look at it as a cold call. I look at it as a warm call because I've done some research about the company and I will reach out to like the CEO. I first started there. Then I learned I probably need to reach out to different levels. But I do that because I have something to offer them and you have to have something in your pitch, whether it's email or voicemail that sets you apart. So one of the things I would say is look at what knowledge you have. Even if you don't have any clients right now, what can you do? What are article can you write? What blog post? What case study can you write so you can reach out to the head of Coca-Cola and just say, I just recently drafted an article about the three top risks impacting food manufacturing companies in 2018. I thought it might be of interest to you. Are you available? And ask for the appointment. Ask mm -hmm. for it. They're going to say no if they even respond at all, but that's okay because this builds the muscle because when you're building this muscle up, then it becomes like, well, I want to do another call. I want to talk to someone else. And I do the same thing when I go out to networking events or I meet someone. I just um, found a new local restaurant in my area. It's really untapped potential that's there met with the owner a few times. I come in as a customer. He mentioned me the other day, you know what? I want to do a business networking mixer here. Would you partner on that with me? I don't know how to do it. Sure. I'm going to help him with that because at the end of the day, you're going to become my client <laughs> because and I know that you need the sale. So you've got to always be looking for an opportunity of how can I introduce someone to my service in a non-traditional way. You probably have gold in your backyard. We have clients here where we're located in Miami, we have clients domestically, we have clients internationally. My backyard is wherever I'm going to go, but I've always looked for a way of just offering what I do, but it's because I got clear on my service and my price and I don't budge on my price. We are, you have to really be clear and determined not to budge on your price either. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you a question because you guys know I'm the technical person, right? And I always like mm -hmm. to play the devil's advocate. So if somebody is coming, let's just say they're a new person in business or this is new for them, you know, they, mm -hmm. they, they are trying to get into that space of selling. So you mentioned, you know, you are part of, a, a, of groups where you've invested into programs where you know the people in the group are of high velocity. You know, these are people that you want to connect with. You've had yeah. the resources to invest into these groups because you knew the outcome. But for someone 
someone who may not have resources, quote unquote, right now to invest in getting themselves in a mastermind or around mm -hmm. other like-minded people, how do you suggest they go about being able to find people that they can per se partner with or leverage or add value to them mm -hmm. in order to share what they do with other people? Yeah, I love that question. So before I joined that program, I went through four months of what I call door knocking and cold calling for my business. So when I, for me, what it looked like is I, I was still, let, let's talk about people who you might be in a nine to five right now. I love talking to people in a nine to five. The first thing is you have to take the cap off of your thinking that you only have prospects in your neighborhood. So I remember years ago, I had a very hectic job. I worked 60 to 70 hours a week. I had to be at work at 8 a.m. So what I did is I knew my services. I knew my price. So I said, well, who's, who's doing business when I'm getting ready for work? Can I take 30 minutes to reach out to business owners? So I kid you not, I cold called businesses in Ireland because when it was 6 a.m. for me, it was noon for them. So I did that. I made some traction. I made the biggest thing. It was a lesson for me to talk to them. So you might be saying, okay, LaDonna, I'm not doing that at six in the morning. Okay, great. So when you get off from work in the evening, I did the same thing. I said, well, who's still open? Well, Hawaii is like five hours ahead of me at the time of where I was living. So I called businesses in Hawaii. I got conversations going. I found out what they needed. I offered to do a free consultation strategy session. I needed to build that muscle. I also, for those of you like, well, I'm not going to do that after work. Okay. What about your lunch hour? Do you need the full hour to eat? No, you don't. You really need like 20 minutes. Sorry for my nutritionist people out there, but you really need that. I would sit in my car at lunch and I would call people. I would, on my way into work, depending on what you're going to do, who's in your neighborhood, I would go and visit companies on my lunch hour. If it's my break time, I'd follow up with them on my break time. The point is, you do have time to build your business. I do not suggest for people to just up and leave your job. Your job is your investor. So if you're thinking, oh, when I have full time in my business, I can grow it. Not really. So look at the time that you have available now. I did that for a year. I, I mean, constantly going through on weekends, I would do the same thing. You know, I would go at six in the morning when some of the bakeries were opening up and I would go in and introduce myself as the local strategist in the neighborhood. I just wanted to leave my card there. Or if I knew you know what they would do and they'd be busy and, and they'd be busy with different things. I'd say, let me get you a cup of coffee. I'll bring some Starbucks back. You got to get creative and show up and show up consistently. And then from there, I was able to save money and just being transparent. And then I could get into programs and I was an executive with a really quote unquote good job. It doesn't matter because those people making six figures, you're really not making that much money anyway mm -hmm. um, when you really get down to it. So if you don't have the resources, to purchase to get into programs and things like that. There is so much opportunity right around you. Because again, if you're positioning yourself as the expert, all you're doing is calling and having a conversation. And I don't even care if it sounds choppy and the person tells you it sounds choppy and they hang up on you, great, mm -hmm. continue to do it. So that's mm -hmm. what I would say is you can always find those opportunities and then look for networking opportunities. If you don't have the money to go to a lot of them, there is a lot that are free or get involved with one, volunteer, offer to do a workshop. If you're like, well, LaDonna, I can't travel with that. Okay, so offer to do a webinar. I've been in my car on Zoom doing webinars for people. And I tell them, I'm in between appointments today. So here's where you, I am. Technically I am. I'm in between appointments. It doesn't matter how it looks. Just get it done. Because when my business is at seven figures and we have video of all of the funny stuff that I've done, that is what you do to build your brand because people want transparency and something they can relate to. Mm -hmm. And when you do the work, when you do the work as hard as it is, as uncomfortable as it is, as, as much as when I get off work, I don't always want to do a Facebook Live. I don't want to go and talk to people, but I go through and do it. It's a small amount of your time in the day for the bigger picture. If you're still listening to this and saying, you know, I can't really do that, then I really encourage you to stay at your job because entrepreneurship isn't mm -hmm. going to be cut out for you. And like what people say in, in, in relationships, if the person is really interested in you, they'll make time for you, right? Mm -hmm. so it's the same thing in, in, as, as, an, as being an entrepreneur. And one of the things that, you know, just wanted to reiterate some of the things that you were saying, clients, when you establish yourself as an expert, right, 
that comes through with repetition. You going out there and 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 giving the world notice that I'm here. I'm the expert at whatever it is that you do. Exactly. And what you have to understand is people buy from people that they know, like, and trust. So if you're out there establishing establishing yourself as an expert, you know, creating a, you know value for people, and and a lot of times you create free value that gets somebody an instant result. That can, that at that initially creates an instant rapport with that person and they're going to be more inclined to want to you know continue to follow you and then eventually do business with you so right now i have a question so what do you say then to the person that considers themselves to be an introvert they don't know what to say they don't know how to initiate the conversation I know what I would say. so i know you you talked a little bit about that so far and you gave some really great tips but i know people that really struggle with you know speaking about themselves or speaking mm -hmm. to people in general they get anxious if they're in a group of a room net, at a networking event event and they don't know how to approach people it's yeah. not that they don't want to do it but you know, they just are not built that way. So how does one overcome that? Yeah, so I think there's two main things. There's one is to find a introduction or a way to talk that fits you, right? So we've all seen different people in sales. Everyone is different. Most successful people are, are introverts. But what happens is they find a way to introduce themselves. They find a way to really move in that. The second piece of what happens is that you then need to make it more than about you. So, so here's a way you can start with that. If it's something where you just dread it and you think, I can't do this, think of it this way. If you're going to a networking event, you never have to see these people again. Mm -hmm. If you're calling someone on the phone, they are never going to talk to you again. So it's okay. So if you're saying, break out in sweat, talk to one person, then go to the restroom, break out in sweat, and come back and talk to someone else. Mm -hmm. So find a way that it's easy for you. And, and you really have to shift into, is my why big enough? Mm -hmm. Because if your why is big enough, you will come hell or high water, make this happen. You know, for those of, you know, even if you don't have children, but you can think about, you know, if, if a child is, is you get a call from school and they have a high temperature and they're crying and they're vomiting and there's all this stuff going on. And, and for you, you're at work, the schedule will shift. You will figure out how to go get that baby because it's no longer you being, even if your boss tells you, you can't go, your kid is more important than what this boss has to say. So you're going to go figure it out. So at the end of the day, find something that works for you and then really shift into, you just have to do it. I was telling this to a client through the day. I said, you got to pull off the bandaid. It's going to hurt to take it off slowly, rip it off and just do it. Because once you get into momentum and you tell yourself, just do one, just, just introduce yourself to one person, make one phone call, go up to one person, mm -hmm. send one email, just start with one and then break out in a sweat and do the second one. Just do it all over again. Do 10 ones in a day. <laughs> That's the way you want to look at it. Um, and then also understand that being an introvert, I mean, it's great, but we've been told so many lies about what we are. You know, mm -hmm. you're either too boisterous or you're an extrovert or you're an introvert or, or you know, she's shy or she, I, none of that is true. You are built to who you are. Mm -hmm. There's just a different approach than you'll come out to it. People look at me and say, you're really bold, you're really courageous and you do a lot of things. I would really be comfortable just staying at home and watching Netflix, but I know that that is not going to get me closer to my goal. So I find those things, but I also know my off switch. I know when I've had enough of talking to people, I know when I need to sort of regroup a little bit and have some quiet time. So look, you're just going to have to do it and you're, you're going to have to push yourself. It's a new muscle that you're building in order to really reach your goals. And I could, I could just add on to that too. You know, most people, they, they focus so much on the outcome. What if, what, the what if, the things that don't even happen. So they create a story behind something that hasn't happened. Yeah. And, and, and you know, that's fear, false evidence appearing real. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would definitely encourage the listeners to stop focusing on the outcome and focus more on the value that you're creating right. for that potential client. And also one of the, you know, my interpersonal development coach is, is kicking in. And one thing that, you know, I, I like to tell clients is this that have a fear of selling or, you know, being put in this box or being an introvert or extrovert or whatever, 
In that situation, you need to ask yourself, who do I need to be to close a sale? Yeah. Who do I need to be in that moment? So if I'm an introvert, you know, I, I have to ask myself, who do I need to be to change, to add value to their life? Who do exactly. I need to be to, 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 to grow my revenue for my business? Mm-hmm. And most of the time is going to be something that you are not accustomed, accustomed to being. And, and as I say, you know, in my personal development work, it's, as well as Tamisha, is the things that you resist is where the most transformation happens. Yeah, yeah. And that was me. That was me for sales. I resisted it. I resisted even getting into the conversation. Then I resisted going in for the close, which I, I can talk about that as well. But, you know, you look, it's got to happen. Mm-hmm. Like that was at the end of the day, that's what I had to tell myself. It doesn't matter what I call it. People call it manifesting money. Great. Whatever it is. It is. Did you offer a service and did you get payment? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's it. Like that just, that's just that basic. And that's what keeps your business moving forward. Some of the basics of it. So how do you deal with, how does LaDawn deal with objections? So, you know, we've talked about finding the clients, how to find them, how to get over your nerves, how to just step into it, the things that you need to be prepared for in order to initiate those conversations. But we all know, and you've even said it today, that the average response that you probably will get will be a no, or it will be, you know, not now, later, but the, the, the probability of getting more yeses than no's are, are quite low if we just be honest, right? You have to just keep at it. You have to keep doing it. And you might get that one yes out of 20 no's, but that one yes might equal the same amount of revenue you might have gotten from those other 19 or 20 no's. So you never know. But right. within those conversations that you are having and you're getting those no's or those I, I'll think about it or people are questioning you and your, your authority or they're questioning your receipts, how do you deal with those objections? Yeah, so I think it starts with with a few things. It starts with one, having a really full pipeline of people to reach out to, right? So, and then then the second piece of that is really overcoming the objections before they're an objection. Um, And the third, I would say, is being clear that I'm here to sell. So the, the first thing from a pipeline perspective is for my calendar, I typically have between my goal is to have a minimum 15 sales conversations every week. So I have it already blocked out three a day. I know the time. So when I'm talking to someone, I can offer them that appointment. It also holds me accountable to do I actually have those appointments on my calendar for this week? That's number one of looking at your pipeline. Number two is really going in to overcome the objections before they're an objection. And that starts with letting people People know why you're there. So my conversations when I'm talking with someone, um, even if we've talked before and they know that this is a consultation, I start with them and I say, you know, Damien and Tamisha, you know, thanks for being here today. Here's what I'd like to do. I want to hear more about your goals for your business. I'll share with you what my firm does and a little bit about me. And then I'll also share with you how it would look for us to work together. How does that sound? Mm-hmm. I've already let you know I'm going to pitch you something, mm-hmm. right? So then we go into that. And so I listen to them and, and you want to ask the right questions. So, um, and then there, of course, when you're going through the objections, it's funny that you answer that. I'm actually going through a study of overcoming objections because now I'm real, I'm seeing that there are more objections coming up. There's always going to be things, but a lot of the time with the objection is the number one thing is you can't buy into the negative or, or, really the the false story that your clients and prospects are telling themselves. Mm -hmm. So if people are saying, you know, I can't afford it, I understand you can't afford it. Ask them, when's the last time that they bought something this way? Mm -hmm. Ask them, you know, why is it that, you know, get into questions and conversations with them as to the why, right? So, and, and agree with them. I've been in a position before where I couldn't afford that. I completely understand. I'm not trying to beat anyone up. I'm not trying to make them feel less than where they are because maybe they can't afford to work with you today, but they can probably do it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So start asking the questions and find an answer. So when you're in that dialogue with them, that's what I typically come up with. And am I perfect at it? No, not at all. There's times where I let them way off the hook. I think the biggest part of the objection is also being clear is, are you talking to the person that's going to make the decision? 
Mm -hmm. There's the decision maker, there's the influencer. And so in the beginning, I'll ask that conversation. I, I had that conversation with a key influencer last week. The decision makers are three primary people on the senior board. So our follow-up discussion, I, a part of my process to come and have this consultation with you is the decision makers must be present. Maybe not the ones that'll sign the agreement, AKA you have to have an agreement. Um, it, it really is the people that would be impacted by the work that we're doing right and so you want to have them there at the table now is that nerve-wracking a little bit because now I have to go in a room with these four people and talk through it so I'm not behind I'm not on zoom I'm not on the phone anymore so it's really getting clear of attacking those objections before they come up and there's ways that you can layer that in your dialogue with people to where you're already talking through it I am constantly in every Facebook live I do blog posts interview i'm talking about the objections as to when people are watching me and they're listening to me they're already thinking this is what i get i get Ladonna, i really want to work with you but i don't think i can afford you it's a great compliment to have um and then b i think i need what you do but can you explain it to me because we're not cookie cutter we we are very customized in what we do for every client i love hearing that because what they're saying is i need it but i'm not sure i'd rather have a maybe to turn that into a yes. And even no's are really not now. <laughs> like they're, I mean, they're, they're really that, you know, that's what you can move it into. So that's what I would say is if to have how to overcome your objection is have lots of people to talk to overcome the objection before it already comes up and let people know you're there to sell them. Right. Even if they say, Oh, I'm not, I may not be ready to make a decision today. I understand, but you know what? In hearing what you do, Damien, Tamisha, you're the type of client I'd want to work with. And let me tell you why. So you may not be ready today, mm -hmm. but tell me, why do you think you're not ready today? You just shared with me that you want to have X amount of revenue this year. You want to work from home. You know, what would it look like if that was your reality? Get into reminding them of what it could be. So that's what I would say with overcoming the objections. And then there's a whole plethora of learning that you can do on yeah. some of the other objections. And it's going to change up a little bit depending on if you're business to consumer or business to business. Right. But don't be rocked on it. You know, just go in, ask questions. I found even in my career as being a project manager and doing strategic initiatives for Fortune 100 companies, I was successful in my roles because I kept asking questions and people could see your methodology. They could see that you were interested. They could see that you were an expert and then they open up dialogue because your client will tell you what the block is, what the objection is. Mm -hmm. If you ask questions and if you listen. Yeah, I learned that. I wouldn't say the hard way, but just kind of like what you said in, in a lot of trial and error, that wasn't the hard way. Actually, that mm -hmm. was, it was great because I learned that, you know, even though in the beginning of my business, I was getting tons of people that were interested in, and, you know, but I couldn't keep the calls at bay as far as setting them up, but I get them on the phone and I would, I wasn't able to close them. So it was like, okay, let me dissect this in my brain. And I realized that I had to ask more questions to kind of pull things out. But one thing that really worked and helped to probably shift the turnaround in our business is if for nothing else, like Damien said, and you said it also, you know, people are married to the end result, which is the no. But I don't look at any of those calls as a bad thing because you get intel. If for nothing else, you get intel, you're getting the language mm -hmm. of, of what people really need, what they're yeah. struggling with. So you, I go into every single call as an information call, you know, the selling you I have to do this to my own brain. The selling you and you signing on, that's the bonus. But mm -hmm. I'm always going into the call like, okay, I'm here to serve this person and they're going right. to serve me in return because they're going to tell me if this person is an ideal client and I make sure that I vet people before I even get them on the phone. Um, but it's going to give me intel to what my audience needs. Right. So that's another way that I kind of approach those types of situations. And I've learned that when you really start to ask questions, you start to peel those layers off of that onion and yeah. then other things become mm -hmm. available to them where they're like, okay, maybe I can afford this or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever it is that they were thinking in their brain at that time, they realize it's not as serious as they thought it was, or that's not a block for them after all, if they're serious mm -hmm. or they'll find a way to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm glad that you said that because that's very important. And, and even also from that Intel, you, you, you can learn a lot of things. One, you can learn if you're charging too little, you can learn if, if what you're offering is actually what people want. So there's right. so many different things, you know, and the only way you're going to know that 
you have to you have to put yourself out there to know is this valuable is this what they're asking for is am i am i charging too little am i charging too much those type of things come become present to you right and, and also you know um you know talking about some of the tactics one of the things that i've done is you know i'll tell people and it's a qualification type of thing in the conversation where you're it's a conversation but you're qualifying people and i would say hey listen um if 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 you're on this webinar thinking that i'm gonna sell you something i'm not gonna let you down because i'm gonna sell you something yeah you know and 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 sometimes you and you know if you're doing a webinar you may see some people click off so you might yeah. have 50 people on there and you're down to i don't know maybe 12 people you know just using that as an example but you know that the 12 people that stayed on there understand that they are being sold on something yep. and they're yep. still interested so it's a great qualifier too and you can't be afraid to to tell them exactly what we're gonna do hey listen i you you have you have something i have something that you need it will provide value for you it will grow your business x y and z and i'm not gonna let you down because i am gonna sell you something at the end Exactly, because when did you want to know in the beginning, right? I think it's sometimes, and, and you mentioned something earlier about relationships, and I think it's so true. When did you want, to, you want to know in the beginning if this was a relationship you're going to stay with or not, right? So you push past the facades, and you push past all that, and you get straight to it, and you just ask the question. Mm -hmm. And so I think people have to do that, and people might think, you know, well, that's pushy. I don't want to be a pushy person. I don't want to seem greedy. I don't want to seem like I'm selling them. Why? Selling is a beautiful thing. Selling is something thing that to, to be honored to be a salesperson back in the day was an honorable thing because trust me you are selling something today and you're selling yourself on the reason as to why you can't go out and do this and you can do this you know a lot of people nowadays they know about webinars they know about the pitch they know the pitch is coming later look let's just get to it up front this is what's going to happen i am going to offer that to you and even in some consultations with people when they're sharing with me what they need and we're talking about it i'll let them know you know the investment for this is probably going to be about five figures probably in the early teens depending on what they're doing and just to share with you but at the end i can give you more of a concrete price i want to know up front i want them to know exactly what's going on because it cuts down on the amount of time for all of the follow-up and this and that i have a prospect i'm talking to now they've had some medical issues come up so really when we got down to it it was because of a large expense that they have to pay out this month and they're just thinking ladon i don't know what the amount of the invoice is going to be for that so you're, you're going to have to take some time nothing's going to happen overnight not all the time but depending on what you're leading with and what you offer them and offer them the right thing which means you need to have more than one service or more than one product not a catalog of 200 things but just what are the core things you can offer your clients and that's what i do i say okay based on what you're telling me i'm going to give you two different options here's option one and the price here's option two and the price which one you, which one do you, you know, and I tell people, you know, depending on, you know, you, you know yourself more than anyone else, what seems better for you, option one or option two? And also, that's why it's that much, that is so pivotal to, for you to know who your ideal client is, because mm -hmm. you want to get it down to the point where you are, you know, like when pe some people say in church, I felt like the pastor was talking to me. Yeah. You want to you be so prepared that you're you're finishing the sentences yeah so it, it, it makes the, the 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 sales pitch more of a conversation right right and, and you have done your homework and they you know again that builds your status as an expert and as the authority and and and, and builds up their their know and like trust factor for you to want to do business with you right so, you know and one of the things that we didn't talk about was one one thing that i always tell people you know especially coming you know new into selling things I wonder if you're gonna say what stop I'm right selling here. out of desperation oh, no. oh yeah when you are yes. selling out of desperation and i know sometimes you you might have a, a really big bill to pay mm -hmm. it could be your mortgage it could be your rent it could be you know school it could be anything when you when you sell from a place of desperation you will attract desperate people right who will not pay for your services exactly so i just wanted to share that 
Yeah. yeah. And if you're at that part, right, like we all have services, like for, you know, for us, we have our high end services, we have our low end services. So what's your strategy for meeting that sales goal? So mm -hmm. maybe your business doesn't look like the way you think it's going to look like. Is there ways that you can contract out your services? We do that a lot where there's smaller projects people need to fill in on something. Okay. So it may not be the $10,000 package, but maybe it's something to where we can get an introduction to someone or support that they need. So look for different ways to do that. But that's going to that's gonna come from you knowing what it is that you do, getting really clear, and what it is, what is your cost. So that way you can enter into those dialogues and you can say, okay, I have this goal. Instead of taking my $10,000 package and just selling it for a thousand so I can get a thousand, what can I sell for a thousand? What is it that I do? I remember hearing um, an online coach years ago say when she got to that point of really understanding she was a, in a business, she put her CEO hat on and then she looked for different ways to do it. So she had a coaching practice and then she started doing tutoring because she had a skill to do tutoring. So she brought in five, $600 a week. So then she looked for other things. She sat down as the CEO and said, what can I do to bring money into the business? and not be tied to how it looks and tied to just that. Because even some of the biggest mentors online, they have multiple streams of income. Mm -hmm. It's not just the one thing that you're looking at. So when you get into that mindset, it takes away sort of the desperation because it's now, let me go attack the problem and find a solution that can fit because I'm clear on what I do and I know what I should charge. So then you can work backwards from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. So one last question I want to ask you around the sales, and we've all heard this, well, we, each of us have heard this before. The fortune is in the follow-up. Yeah. Right? And so people start the conversation, they may get some no's, they may get discouraged, they may get some maybe not now's, but then they forget to follow up or they, they drop off the follow-up process yeah. together. So what is your strategy for your follow-up with clients? Oh, I love that. So I actually, yeah. So actually, um, this is a piece of what we build out for our clients as well as what that looks like. So it's continuing to layer content to show that we're the experts. There's a number of different ways that you can do that. You can do webinars. Of course, you can do Facebook lives. You can do your email marketing. We have actually a step approach of what we do within the first 30 days with them and then what we do for the rest of the year. So there's always going to be something that we're reaching out to our clients with. The biggest thing that I do is I pick up the phone and I call them, you know, and I ask questions, you know, why haven't we done business together? You know, we were talking the other day about moving forward. Did something come up in the business, you know, or sharing with them, you know, if I feel like there's another option available, I'll say, you know, I was thinking about our conversation the other day. I have a different option that I think might be a better fit for you. Just know that you need to continue to follow up and layer and they have busy lives like everyone else. Um, so it could just be a timing thing. You have to take a look at that as well. So continue to follow up and then you'll find your flow of what's good in a follow-up and what really works for your clients. Be open to the feedback. What I was hearing from some clients, um, some of it was around sort of the service and they were looking for additional time with me. So I was like, oh, well, if that's it, we can solve that. Mm -hmm. You know, well, here's two more months of service that we can do for X, Y, and Z. So continue to follow up and we layer it from um, doing webinars, Facebook lives, um, we also do use cases we send out, newsletter. It's constantly layering, layering them as, as we are the expert. Another thing you can do is reach out to someone and say, you know, I'm looking to, if you know of anyone, Tamisha, here's a service I do. Do you know of anyone who might be interested in it? Knowing good and well, nine times out of 10, she's the one that needs it. So go ahead and offer that. And I have people say that, well, you know what, actually, I'm really interested in that. Wait, do you have some time to connect offline. So I want to, even if we've talked three times offline, I want to get you back offline. Do you have about 15, 20 minutes we can connect with today? I text people the same thing, not a long laundry list text, but we do get really clear on exactly what we can offer those individuals. Awesome. Ladon, thank you so much. These strategies and um, tips and things that you shared with us are very impactful. Um, they definitely are some things that we know can help people with overcoming that sales challenge that they have um, and just really taking the whole thing away from selling and just yeah. focus on the fact that you are set up to give value. That's what you're in business for. You're in business right. to give value to somebody. And exactly. as long as you approach the situation like you have a problem and I have the, the solution, then 
it's not a sale. It's what you should be doing. You have an obligation to help someone. If you know, if somebody is sick and they're dying and you have the cure, why would you hold that from them? Exactly. So if right. you approach it that way, then that can take some of that anxiety away from it. Um, and so I really like the way that you layered your, your process as far as how you go about doing it. You gave some really great examples and tips of different strategies that people can use. So you can literally pick one that works for you or try all of them or come up with your own to really figure out what works for you. There's no right or wrong way to sell a business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a great segue too, because the bottom line is if you are not adding value to someone who needs it, that means you are allowing people's businesses to die. Yeah. And the bottom line is entrepreneurship is not, you know, when someone passes away, unfortunately, there's a flat line, right? Businesses is, is about, you know, like when that, that, I don't know what that thing is called, but that graph, when someone is alive, yeah. it's like a roller coaster ride. If you're not selling, your, your business will eventually flatline as well as other people's businesses that right. need the value added that you can give them to help them survive and, you know, um, and fuel their why. So, right. Stop letting business die. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, LaDawn, can you please tell people where they can find you if they want to learn more about your products or services? Please share that. Sure. You can go to bossgroup.org. That's V as in Victor, O, S as in Sam, group, G-R-O-U-P dot org. And also, for those people that might want a little bit more of this information, I have a great self-study course that they can check out. It's called The Seven Steps to Strategic Success. We actually walk through the more of the preparation and execution piece. And so they can visit bossgroup.org backslash shop. And for anyone who signs up for um, the self-study course, I'll give away a, for a free 30 minute strategy session all you'll have to do is after you sign up send an email to hello h-e-l-l-o at bossgroup.com.org and in the subject line put the duncans and i'll know that you are there to redeem your free 30-minute strategy session we get a lot done in 30 minutes it's more time than you think you actually have and we can really dig into one specific challenge you're having in your business and come up with a blueprint to attack that and move forward so, awesome. And, and we, then we also work with LaDawn as well as part of our VIP coaching that we do with our clients to help them develop their brand strategy. We bring LaDawn on and LaDawn does a whole sales strategy um, with them. So that's something that you guys should know about as well, because we know it just doesn't stop with getting your brand and your marketing together, but also the selling part is the component because as Damien said earlier, sales is a lifeline of your mm -hmm. business. So you've got to know how to be able to get out there, speak to your audience and, and, and sell and make money. Yeah, and we, and we take tremendous pride in creating accountability at levels where we're holding you to the gauntlet yeah. to make yeah. sure that you get what you need done. Because the bottom line is if you're not selling, your business is not going to survive. You're not going to be able to fuel your why and you're going to be miserable <laughs> for the rest of your life. And we're, and we're not going to allow that on our watch at all. Yeah, exactly. I remember hearing those words and that was so powerful for me because when you're around mentors that push you, I remember the days I didn't want to do a sales call. I was like, well, I got to show some sales for this month. Like I can't just say, I was fearful of doing it. So that means a lot to be connected with mentors that do that. That's not your average coach. That's not the average program that's out there. It's really something unique. And I'll be forever grateful for just working with you. And just even now being able to reach out and be like, this is what's going on. Like, what would you do? <laughs> um, and so it's, I mean, it's amazing. Cause I always say the surgeon can't perform surgery on themselves. So you no. need those strategic mm -hmm. partners to come in and help you with that. Absolutely. And, 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 every, and every piece of advice, mentorship, whatever, accountability, everything we do comes from a place of love because we want to see you win. It's all yeah. about winning. Losing is a part of it, but winning is the ultimate result. And that's exactly. what we create, winners. And that's, that's just the bottom line. Not to sound crazy and cocky, but we really that's love what truth. we do. I it's, mean, it's the, yeah. the proof is in the pudding. And LaDawn is, is a great example and the epitome of winning. Okay? Yes. So... Thank That's you. all I got to say. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you on the next episode of Making the Brand. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure you subscribe and give us a rating and let us know how you feel. If you mm -hmm. have any questions, you can always shoot us an email at team at the duncanenterprises.com and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. 
Are you ready to take your brand to the next level? For more information, show notes, downloads, and free resources, head to www.damianandtamisha.com where you can find out more about this week's episode and the power couple behind it all.